Howdy there, trailblazers. Today, I'm wrangling up a Grand Canyon Las Vegas loop. A whirlwind adventure designed to tickle your sense of awe and wonder from the depths of the Colorado River to the shiny lights of Sin City. So strap your boots, grab your hats, and let's mosey on down the trail. Welcome to the Grand Canyon, the wildest escapade this side of the Mississippi. I'm the Canyon Cowboy, a time traveler from the early 1900s, and somehow got wrangled up in this labyrinth of modernity. But fret not, for me and my trusty Steve Jackpot are fixing to orchestrate an experience of a lifetime for you. So cinch up those saddles and get ready for a wild ride. Now, if you're wondering what in tar nation we've got planned, Take a gander at this trusty map of mine. It's a guide to the most epic Grand Canyon adventure starting and ending in the glitzy lights of Las Vegas. Our aim to show you the ropes, the hidden gems, and the jaw-dropping sights along this loop that'll leave you breathless and your buddies green with envy. Now, before we hit the trail, allow me to introduce my trusty steed, Jackpot. Whoa, 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 steady now, steady now. We'll settle up in just a sec. As I was saying, we'd be much obliged if you give this video a hearty thumbs up and subscribe for more adventures. And if you're bound for these here parts, peruse GrandCanyonPosse.com for all of your travel needs. We got transportation, guided excursions, itineraries, accommodations, and the best grub around these parts. Join the posse and let's make indelible memories. Now where was I? Right, let's giddy up, woo! Now, if you're coming in hot from Vegas, you might want to dip your toes in them Vegas waters first. While Sin City ain't exactly my cup of sarsaparilla, I reckon you do you and have a good time. Just remember, play that there blackjack conservatively and save some coin for the real adventure ahead. Day one. St. George, Utah. St. George, a mere one hour and 45 minutes from Vegas, is a gem waiting to be discovered. Spend the day soaking in the charm of downtown with its quaint eateries and shops. If time permits, explore the wonders of Sand Hollow or Snow Canyon. St. George is perfect for hiking, swimming, off-road vehicle jaunts, and maybe even a hot air balloon ride. But if you're looking for a bit of culture mixed with outdoor splendor, don't miss the Tuacon Amphitheater for a stellar Broadway quality outdoor show under Utah's red rock sky. Now don't go burning the midnight oil cause we're up early for day two, Zion. Zion National Park is a slice of heaven you can't afford to miss. But beware, it can get as crowded as a cattle drive. Aim to roll in no later than 8 a.m. or even earlier to dodge them lines and snag a spot on them shuttle buses that'll take you deep into the heart of Zion Canyon. If you're looking for a hike that'll test your mettle and your balance, there's Angels Landing waiting for you. But mind you, permits are needed for this death-defying adventure. Links in the description below. Or if you're more inclined to get your feet wet, the Narrows beckon with their river wading charm. No permits needed for this upstream stroll to Big Spring, where the canyon squeezes you in like a narrow canyon itself. And for them brave souls looking for a real adventure, there's a 16 mile through hike from Chamberlain's Ranch to the Temple of Sinawava that holds your horses, cause you'll need them wilderness permits for that one. But if hoofing it ain't your cup of tea, fear not, Zion's got plenty of sights and stops off them shuttle buses or driving yourself that'll have you docking and marveling and nature's grandeur. After our Zion escapade, we'll hunker down in Kanab, Utah, a quaint gem nestled in the heart of Red Rock country. Now I could go on talking about Kanab till the cows come home with all of its marvels and stories, but for this journey, it's more of a pit stop. A place to catch our breath, have a nice dinner, before we wrangle up more grandeur on. Day three, North Rim. The journey from Kanab to the North Rim takes about two hours, and let me tell you, I envy those of you getting this opportunity to see the canyon for the first time, because the North Rim 
offer some of the most distinctive and breathtaking views along the entire canyon stretch. If you have the opportunity to snag a cabin at Grand Canyon Lodge, consider yourself lucky. They're as rare as a hen's teeth. More often than not though, it'll be a day trip for most folks. Be sure to check out iconic overlooks like Imperial Point and Cape Royale. A quick and easy hike to Bright Angel Point is a must do. It's a short out and back trail that rewards you with stunning panoramas. Afterward, treat yourself to a refreshing drink at the lodge while you soak in the canyon splendor and give your feet a well-deserved break. I've got a whole video detailing what you can do at the North Rim in just one day, so make sure to give that a watch for all the nitty gritty details. Moving on, our next destination is Page, Arizona. However, it's a bit of a haul to get there. Another two and a half hours of straight driving from the North Rim. By the end of your North Rim day, you might be feeling like you've spent enough time behind the wheel crisscrossing the park. So here's your options. If roughing it is your style, camping options are available at the North Rim. Keep in mind, it gets cold at night at 8,000 feet elevation. If you prefer creature comforts, there are a handful of accommodations between the North Rim and Page, although they are spread out. You've got places like Kaibab Lodge just outside the park, Jacob Lake Inn, Cliff Dwellers Lodge, and Marble Canyon Motor Lodge along the route. Day 4, Page, Arizona home to the dazzling Lake Powell. En route, don't overlook Navajo Bridge. Keep your peepers wide for the grand California condors there, flaunting wingspans that'll make an eagle jealous. A hop, skip, and jump from there, and you're at Lee's Ferry, where you have a unique opportunity to drive all the way up to the mighty Colorado River itself. Now on to Page, a frontier of adventure. You've got the Glen Canyon Dam where you can marvel at man's engineering prowess, dip your tootsies in the brisk waters of Lake Powell, and feast your eyes on two desert marvels that scream iconic American Southwest, Horseshoe Bend and Antelope Canyon. Horseshoe Bend can be a spur of the moment decision, no need to book in advance. Just be ready for a hearty three quarter mile hike that's a bit of a thigh burner. But oh boy, every sweat soaked step is like cashing in on Mother Nature's jackpot. Now Antelope Canyon, that's a different tale. You'll want to plan and book your slot for this slot canyon ahead of time. It's a hot ticket on Navajo land, and they keep tight rain on daily visitors due to its popularity. Sure, you'll rub shoulders with fellow explorers, and the ticket might pinch your pocket a bit, but trust me, it's a journey worth every day. This slot canyon is nature's masterpiece, a swirling symphony of stone carved by centuries of floods. Walking through it feels like you're stepping into a time machine, getting a front row seat to eons of geological art history. With the journey ahead, there's a whole heap of sights and adventures to dive into. You can hunker down and page for the night, or if you're itching to kick off your South Rim escapade early, zip on down to the Cameron Trading Post just a hair over an hour's ride right away. Snag yourself a cozy room and treat your taste buds to a Navajo taco for supper. No matter where you lay your hat, be sure to swing by the Little Colorado River Gorge Tribal Park before tackling the Grand Canyon itself. It's a quick pit stop with a jaw-dropping view of a sheer 1,000-foot cliff, guaranteed to give your bottom a little thrill. Day 5, South Rim of Grand Canyon. If you're thinking, we've already seen the Grand Canyon, why see it again? Well, I might have to give you a gentle thump on the noggin because the South Rim experience is a whole different ball game. It's like stepping into another universe with an abundance of breathtaking views and hiking options that'll knock your socks off. In fact, I put together a video showcasing every single viewpoint you can feast your eyes on at the South Rim. You can check it out through the links below. But if you're pressed for time and need some guidance on where to focus, the do not miss viewpoints in my opinion are Desert View with its iconic watchtower, Lippin Point, Grand View Point, Navajo Point boasting the Geology Museum, and don't forget to make a pit stop at the Grand Canyon Village. To make the most of your time at South Rim, try to snag a room within the park. I, of course, have an affinity for the historic so Bright Angel Lodge or the El Tovar Hotel would be my choices. However, be sure to reserve well in advance, as the rooms tend to fill up faster than a rattlesnake on a hot summer's day. 
For the ultimate hiking adventure on a shorter time frame, the South Kaibab Trail is your golden ticket. With time, hop on the shuttle bus to explore the western views like Powell and Hopi Points, and don't miss my personal favorite structure in the park, Permit's Rest. If rooms inside the park aren't available or don't quite fit your budget, consider checking out Tucson just outside the park's entrance or take a gander at Williams or Flagstaff for more affordable lodging and dining options, though you'd be adding another hour or so in the set. Day six, journey to the Wallapai Nation. On day seven of our adventure, I'm giving you the choice to either navigate a stretch of the Colorado River in just one day, or marvel at the famous Grand Canyon Skywalk. Both of these wonders are located on Wallapai Nation land, but they're about a two hour drive apart. Depending on your accommodations from the night before, today's your chance to take your time making your way to the Wallapai Nation, also known as Grand Canyon West. But this means you've got a half day or more to delve deeper into the canyon or explore what Flagstaff or Williams have to offer. Williams is a quaint town dedicated to the Grand Canyon and Route 66. There are lakes nearby for kayaking and picnicking, Arizona Wildlife Park, great for the little ones, or you can hop aboard the Grand Canyon Railway for some cowboy-themed entertainment and a scenic ride back to the South Rim. Flagstaff, on the other hand, is a bustling city with a plethora of options. From skiing in the winter on the San Francisco peaks to a lively historic downtown with shops, restaurants, and breweries, there's something for everyone. And don't miss Lowell Observatory where Pluto was discovered. Or, if you've spent the previous night in Flagstaff, you could consider an out and back day trip to Sedona, check out Oak Creek Canyon, hike the canyon's west fork, hit up Sedona's uptown, but I wouldn't go much further than that. Traffic in Sedona can get backed up quickly and could take hours to get out if you're not careful. Whatever you do on day six, just ensure you reach Peach Springs by day's end, as we've got an early start for the grand finale. Day seven rafting the Colorado River. The Wallapai Nation is your gateway to rafting the Colorado River, tackling some thrilling rapids, and returning on the same day. Unlike other rafting adventures that commence from Lee's Ferry, requiring a minimum of three days on the river, Wallapai River Runners offers a thrilling one-day experience. They'll pick you up from Peach Springs, transport you to the river, guide you through rapids and scenic trails, then whisk you away via helicopter. A high-octane adventure to cap off your trip. If rafting isn't your cup of tea, Grand Canyon West and the Skywalk await. It's an additional two-hour road trip to reach the Skywalk, but it puts you in close proximity to Vegas. Alongside the Skywalk, enjoy great hiking, zip lining, and helicopter tours, Plenty to satisfy your thirst for adventure. Lastly, on your way back, you've got the option to make a quick stop at the Hoover Dam. As the dust settles on this epic eight-day odyssey through the heart of the Wild West, and you make your way back to Vegas, let your memories linger like the echoes of a distant coyote's call. From the soaring heights of the Grand Canyon's rims to the glittering allure of Vegas neon lights, this journey has woven threads of awe and wonder into the fabric of your soul. Well, I hope this itinerary for the ultimate eight-day loop of Grand Canyon from Las Vegas proves helpful. And if you're keen for travel deals, opt in for weekly emails where we'll give you the latest and greatest of discounts from lodging, tours, to the best grub in the region over at GrandCanyonPosse.com. So, until our paths cross again, I'll see you on down the trail, my friend.